What we're going to be looking at here is debt restructuring by the modification of terms of a loan here. And we'll be looking at a case here where there's no gain to the debtor when reducing the debt obligation. And it's going to be for a notes payable that the debtor has here. And we're going to be looking at it in terms of the debtor here that has to pay this loan. So for example here on 1231-20X1, Bank B enters into a debt restructuring agreement here with Corporation A. Now Corporation A here is experiencing financial difficulties and they're going to uh, be in the position here where they can't pay off this debt that they have and it's going to be for a, a notes payable or a loan here to Bank B. So what Bank B does here, they go in and they restructure a million dollar loan receivable that they have here or notes receivable here from Corporation A and it was originally issued at par here and interest is paid up to date here on this uh, note so they don't have to con be concerned with that. But the note is going to be restructured by and we're got four things that are involved in restructuring these uh, uh, loans here. So number one, we're going to be reducing the principal obligation from $1 million here to $900,000. So what Corporation A would have normally had to pay here was the $1 million, but it's now going to be in the position where they're going to only have to pay $900,000 on this loan here, this note that's outstanding. And number two, they're going to be extending the maturity date here, for, and we're going to look at if it was a originally due here on 1231-20X1, this million dollars that was payable here to Bank B by Corporation A, but now it's going to be extended out here four years here to the end of the 1231-20X5. So we've extended it uh, four years here. And number three here, we're going to be reducing the interest rate here from 12% to 8% per year here. So originally the loan or the note was issued here at 12%, but now it's being revised down here to 8% per year. And point four here, well, uh, the reduction or deferral of accrued interest, that would normally have to be considered here on one of these uh, modification of terms of a loan, but since the interest was paid up to date, it won't be required in this case. So what we want to do, and what we're, let's go down here and look at it, what we have to do on these debt restructurings here, we have to come up with a new amortization schedule. So for our debt restructured here, we're going to have to calculate the new effective interest rate here to amortize this uh, notes payable or this loan that's outstanding here. So what we know here, and let's go look at our schedule, what we know here is we have the original amount that's the original carrying amount or this note that was one million dollars here and we have to amortize that down to nine hundred thousand dollars at its maturity here four years later so originally we we're responsible here at one million dollars now uh, corporation a here is only going to have to pay nine hundred thousand dollars so we have to start out with that beginning uh, balance here the uh, the carrying value of the uh, that of the original note here and we have to amortize it down to what's actually going to have to be paid here when it matures. That's based on our restructuring here. Now the other thing that we have here our payment amount that is that cash interest payment here normally uh, when originally it was at 12 percent per year here now we're revising it down to 8%. So what we would have had is we would have had to pay 12% on that original amount here of $1 million. Now we're going to only have to pay 8%, but we're going to be paying 8% here on the new amount that we have to pay off here. That's what the note is being revised down here to $900,000. So what our uh, interest payments would be here is just the 8% here times the $900,000 or $72,000 per year. Total amount we're going to have um, pay interest on it here is over those four years here $288,000. Okay, so now what we have to do is we have to calculate this new effective interest here, interest rate here. It's going to, you can see here, it's going to be carried out to five or six decimal points here. But how we do that is we're going to use a financial calculator here. So what, what you do, you take out your financial calculator here, and, you, and these are the numbers we're going to be working with here. So um, number of years that we're going to be looking at here is four years here or four payments here. And what we have to calculate is that new effective of interest rate. So we take the present value here on your calculator, that's equal to that million dollars carrying value that we started with here. And we'd enter that here, let's just say as a positive amount. Now the two, uh, we have to put in a payment amount here. Well, that's that $72,000 payment per year here, that 8% uh, at $900,000 loan here. So that's 
put that in as a negative amount here, 72,000. And then we've got the future value here. That's the maturity value. That's that $900,000. Put that in as a negative number. And then your calculator, we will calculate here the effective interest rate at 4.87559%. So this is based on this, uh, our our amortized amount here from a million to 900,000 and these interest payments of at 8% here, we're going to come up with this new effective interest rate here that we looked at. So now we can amortize it here. So what we would do here, uh, we start out with the million dollar amount here, carrying value here, times that in, uh, effective interest rate here, 4.8759%. And we come up with our effective interest payment for the first year here at $48,756. So the amortized amount here is simply the difference between a cash payment of $72,000 and our effective payment here, $48,756. And that's going to equal $23,244. So now we would subtract that here from our beginning balance of a million. We come up with the new amortized amount here of $976,756. And just continue on in that fashion here. Just take that effective interest rate here times your new carrying amount here. That's going to give you your new effective interest rate here. Subtract that here from the cash payment amount that you're making here and that's going to give you the new amortized amount which you would be reducing your um, back, uh, beginning balance by that amount until you get down here to nine hundred thousand dollars so now to record this here so what we've done effectively we're only paying hundred eighty eight thousand dollars here and we're actual cash payment is two hundred eighty eight thousand so our amortized amount here was one hundred thousand dollars and that you can see here that was the beginning balance of a million here we amortized it down to nine hundred thousand dollars that was the hundred thousand dollar amortized amount okay so now what we have to do is we have to look at any gains or losses here so let's just look at how we calculate that so our total future cash flows after restructuring well we have to pay the nine hundred thousand dollar off here nine hundred thousand dollars when it becomes due here at the end of the um, fifth year or the fourth at the end of the fourth year after the restructuring here and we're also going to be paying that cash payment here of two hundred eighty eight thousand dollars or two hundred eighty eight thousand dollars here in four cash payments of seventy two thousand dollars each so our total future cash flows would be the nine hundred thousand dollar principal here plus the two hundred eighty eight thousand dollars in interest and that gives us a total ca a future cash flow one million one hundred eighty eight thousand dollars now we compare that to the beginning carrying value here and that's what the original note was for that one million dollars here and you can see that what we're paying off here in the future is greater than that uh, carrying amount here of one million dollars so um, in this case it, it exceeds the, the you exceed the total pre-structuring carrying value of one million dollars here so the debtor records no gain here and makes no adjustment to the issued or carrying amount of the payable so they didn't make you didn't make any adjustment here to that million dollar amount that you had to pay off here but you had to amortize it down and then you wouldn't uh, record any gain or any gain here because there isn't any here uh, because you are going to be paying off more than what what you started with here so there is no gain here all right so let's go and look at how we'd record this here on our balance sheet and on our income statement again we're looking at it from corp a the debtor's perspective here with these interest payments after restructuring here so what we would have done here and i'm not setting up any uh, in this case we would have had a premium on a notes payable here i'm not setting that up here i'm just going to uh, show it right directly to our notes payable how we'd reduce it here so we started out with the million dollar uh, carrying value here that was that our note we usually normally it was originally issued for a million it still remains at a million but we have to amortize it down here so we do that by just taking it right off our amortization schedule so let's look at that here so maybe what we should do is let's start with our cash account here which is on the balance sheet here and our notes payable here that's the restructuring amount again on our balance sheet as a liability so looking at our cash account here let's look at well we got we would credit or reduce our cash for each of those four years where we uh, on this 
uh, restructured notes here uh, by $72,000. That was the cash payment here. So we'd credit or reduce our cash account for each of those periods by uh, each of those years by $72,000. And then for our notes payable here, um, we would uh, debit that or reduce our notes payable here um, for each of, for that amortized amount here. And let's look at that here. That's the C here. That's the reduction of principal. That's that C amount here off our amortization schedule here. The twenty-three thousand two forty-four and on down here through twenty-six thousand eight hundred twelve at the for the last year. So that we'd credit a debit or reduce our notes payable by that amount here, and then we would have amortized it down total amount here would have been amortized down to nine hundred thousand dollars so that's coming right off our amortization schedule here that you can see here and then our interest expense and that's the effective interest here and that's on our income statement remember that was that rate here four point uh, long up decimal here eight seven five five nine percent so we would debit or increase our interest expense or an income statement here by let's look at that effective interest rate here that started out with forty eight thousand seven hundred fifty six and then it would become a lesser amount here until we get down to forty five thousand one hundred eighty eight dollars so that was our total effective interest rate here uh, interest expense here and that was hundred eighty eight thousand dollars total amount here so what we've done okay we've recognized our interest expense here on the income statement at that new effective interest rate here and then the one last thing here when the note actually comes due here at the end of the fifth year here what we would do is we have the nine hundred thousand dollar balance sitting here in our notes payable well we'd uh, correct debit that out here by nine hundred thousand dollars remove the notes payable off the books here and then we'd credit or reduce our cash account here by the nine hundred thousand um, dollar amount here of that note when it, its maturity value when it comes due here so what we've done here just to go over it really briefly again here our cash that was based on coming off our amortization schedule here, our cash payments. That was the actual interest payment here at 8% that we calculated, 72000 per year here, or $72,000 per year for the interest payment. And, and that was really taking the, fa uh, the what they knew face value of that note or what a maturity amount here 900,000 times 8% and then our notes payable here I simply amortize come they reduce that here from 1 million to 900,000 again that was coming off our amortization here as a reduction of principal that we calculated here that C value up here and then our interest expense that's really the effective that's the actual interest that we're paying here on that loan here that's the actual one that we're going to recognize here in our income statement and again that comes off our amortization schedule so what we've done here again for our amortization schedule we uh, started out with the million dollars that was what was originally due on that note but then it was revised down here to nine hundred thousand dollars and we amortized it down coming up with that new effective interest rate here and then we determine the reduction of our principal based on that here between the difference between our cash payments here the effective interest uh, uh, the expense that we'd recognize that gives us a reduction of principal and then we're able to amortize that note down here from million dollars down to nine hundred thousand dollars all right so that takes care of our debt restructuring here by modifying the terms of a loan and we just looked at it in the case here uh, from the debtors perspective here Next, we'd have to look at it from the creditor's perspective here, where we have no gain here on this restructuring of this loan.